Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with their favorite niche real estate raw land website, www thelandgeek.com and today is really unique and special because I've never had on the Land Geek podcast a real estate attorney and I'm always getting emails about legal issues and attorney issues and all those good things and so I thought why not get someone who specializes in real estate and so today's guest is Jeff Lerman and he has established a nationwide reputation as the real estate investor's lawyer. He's been featured on TV, radio, and in front of numerous real estate investment clubs as an expert on various real estate topics. He's been the president of the Marin County Bar Association, chair of the State Bar Real Estate Litigation Section, and chair of the Marin County Bar Association Real Property Section. And even more impressively, he's been selected for inclusion in the 2013 Northern California Super Lawyers. He's not just a regular attorney. He's a super attorney. He has received the highest rating possible for professional excellence in ethics by Martindale Hubble as rated by his fellow lawyers. He has received the highest rating possible by Avo.com as rated by his peers and clients. Let's just say it. He's a big deal. So I want to introduce... Jeff Lerman to the Land Geek Podcast. Jeff, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Good. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to enlighten the Land Geek community. Thank you for having me. No, it's 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 my pleasure. So, you know, after reading your bio, let's face it, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the anchorman voice. You're kind of a big deal. <laughs> well, we do our best. Yeah, yeah. So walk me through you know, there's so many subsections of being an attorney. Why real estate for you, and how did you get involved in it, and what's been sort of the, the career arc for you? Well, a lot of years ago, I uh, branded myself as the real estate investor's lawyer because I asked myself what clients I want to represent. And at that time, I also am an, I, I, I am an investor myself. Uh, own a lot of properties, part of a multifamily office, which is a multi um uh, it's a multi-generational family office. So we've got three generations of real estate investors in our real estate development and investment company. And um, I, so I asked myself, what kind of clients do I want to work with? And the answer was very clear. I wanted to work with like-minded real estate investors. And so um, we branded ourselves as a real estate investor a lot of years ago, about 20, I don't know, 25 years ago, and never looked back. I mean, there's just uh, obviously in whatever the whatever stage of the economy we are in, there are always uh, investors who need help. And uh, it's um, most satisfying to me to work with other investors. I, I, you know, I've been in the trenches. We talk the same language. I, I know what it feels like to uh, go through the cycle of ownership of real estate, and I just enjoy dealing uh, with, with that particular kind of client. Yeah, you know what's interesting is is most attorneys, I mean, I don't want to, I guess I don't want to just kind of generalize here, but I'm going to generalize, and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. But it seems that there's, there's deal-making attorneys and there's deal-breaking attorneys. That's that's a good point. Very good point. And unfortunately, if you want to come up with a generalization, I think that is uh, that's a fair generalization. One of the things that I pride myself on is I am a deal maker, not a deal breaker. And one of the uh, higher level values I think I bring to the relationship, and I say this uh, just because my clients have told me this, is that they appreciate the fact that I understand the business aspect of what they're doing and we bring creative solutions to their problems uh, because, as we all know, uh, you know, you and I are both investors. Uh, creati creativity is one of the most important things 
in this business, and a lot of times the deals aren't made when you go under contract. The deals, the best deals, are made in the in the middle of the deal. You know, I mean, when you you're you're in contract, you're doing your due diligence, and you know that's when that's when some of the best deals are made. And so, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I um, I do pride myself on on that that I am uh, one of the most pragmatic and business uh, minded entrepreneurial uh, lawyers you'll ever meet. Yeah, it's, and I think that's rare. I think most attorneys, at least that I've come across, they don't want to take the risk of telling their client, hey, let's make this deal happen, and then it goes bad, and then the attorney, the client says, oh, that guy is terrible. Yeah. Well, I think the reality is that uh, most lawyers just practice law, and the fact that I've been an investor for decades, you know, there's experience that that informs everything I do as a lawyer, and uh, it's not it's not uh, slamming other lawyers. It's just the reality is that if you have a you know if you're an investor and you've got a lawyer who only knows the law, but you have another lawyer who not only knows the law, but understands transactions from a business standpoint uh, and knows what it feels like, you know when a deal uh, goes sideways and and wants to you know can relate to your concerns, needs, and objectives as an investor, you know, that there is a benefit to that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So as far as in real estate law, would you say that the majority of people come to you because they want to structure some type of uh, private placement to raise money? Well, we do a lot of fundraising. We do a lot of syndications. We do joint ventures. Uh, we we deal with uh, investors at every stage in the cycle of ownership. Everything from um, the very beginning, uh, entity formation, fundraising, purchase and sale agreements, um, loan documents, construction. Uh, joint ventures, everything. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there is there is obviously a lot of that going on, especially in this cycle where we are in this cycle right now. We are, I think, in my, from, my, from my perspective, we're smack dab in the middle of one of the best recoveries uh, and best times to invest in history and I think uh, maybe the best the best time to invest uh, that I'll see for the rest of my life. And so as an investor, I'm being as aggressive as I've ever been in uh, being out there looking at deals. We've done a couple of deals this year and we're looking to do more. I'm, I'm looking to do that year end deal, you know? Sure. Sure. Uh, 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 and um, so, yeah, we, we, uh, we work with investors certainly uh, in fundraising. Uh, absolutely a lot. Yeah, I mean, in real estate, it's always about other people's money, right? And, yeah, and, and, and that's a key. Yeah. And that, and you know, you just made a great point, which to you and me may seem like investing one on one, investing one on one. But let's talk about that for a second because I think, yeah, the common sense of that may be lost on on. Uh, we, we may be assuming uh, that our audience understands this, but let me tell you a story. Sure. I um, I teach syndications and I teach joint ventures a lot and I was at a conference uh, a few weeks back where I was teaching this topic of how to raise money with joint ventures instead of syndications now why would you say that what why would I say what why, why would you be saying do a joint venture as opposed to a syndication because what? I firmly believe and, and one thing that's also important for you and your audience to understand is uh, when we talk about this topic of joint ventures versus syndication, right. uh, I am totally unbiased in everything I say. My only bias is to make sure that my client uh, that I uh, my client has enough information to make an informed decision. And uh, actually, if I get hired to do a syndication for somebody, uh, the the legal fees on that are quite a bit higher than if you hire me just to do a joint venture. But whenever somebody comes to me and asks me to help them with the syndication, the very first thing I'll do is say, look, before you go down that road, have you considered a joint venture? You'll end up, it's, I think, I firmly believe, it's the cheapest, easiest, fastest, and safest way to do deals with OPM. Because 
if you work with a, if you do things in a joint venture and to define joint venture quickly, sure. joint sure. ventures where a coming together of two or more people where everybody's actively involved as opposed to one person just writing you a check or giving you their money and, and, and waiting for you to pay them a profit. So a joint venture where everybody's actively involved, uh, yeah, the, you don't have to, that's not a security. If, if it's what I just said, if, if your facts are what I just said, everybody's actively involved, then it is not defined as a security, and then you do not have to worry about the securities laws. You don't have to worry whether somebody's an accredited investor. You don't have to worry whether you have had a pre-existing substantive relationship with somebody. All this talk you're hearing out there about crowdfunding and all that other stuff, which is another topic that I, uh, I teach and talk on. Um, all of that complexity and the expense and the time, all of that goes out the window and you can get deals done um, a lot quicker. I was at a conference uh, earlier this past year. Okay. And uh, I met somebody who had an apartment building and they were looking for money. I, uh, I met with them. We went out for drinks for about an hour and I said, it sounds like a good deal. Uh, let's, you know, let's meet uh, in w where the apartment building is. Let me look at it. I went there for a day and we made a deal. I brought all the money to that deal, brought $900,000 to that deal. And we had the deal done in 30 days. No securities laws issues. Um, easy. Wow. You know? Wow. So, you know, that's. But, that's... Now, but now you're living with that guy. You're living with that partner. Yes. It's like another, it's like another spouse. As opposed to the syndication, they, they you know, of course, the, your partners have a say, but at the end of the day, they're more passive, correct? They are more passive, but get, make no mistake, <laughs> if you do a syndication, uh, you are married to your partners in that context as well. There, is, there are certain, there are differences in the relationship, right. but, uh, but it's not... Uh, it's it's still it, it, there's still a relationship and there are still duties that you have to that partner. Yes, listen, there are in every real estate investing strategy, every right. single real estate investing strategy, there are always pros and cons and risks that are unique to that particular strategy. Is this strategy risk free? No. If you're looking for a risk fee, a risk free strategy in real estate, then you should not be in real estate. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so just tell me and the Lange community, what is the secret to finding a good JV partner? Great question. So uh, the secret is to, first of all, and, and let, let me underscore uh, for a moment before I answer why that's such a great question. Because we talked a minute ago about pros and cons and risks and whatnot. Uh, if you are going to do a deal with other people's money, OPM, right. whether it's a syndication or whether it's a joint venture, uh, the, it is so critical to do it correctly because the costs of not doing it correctly can be devastating. Give, give, uh, do, give me an example of devastating. Well, I do litigation as well as transactions, and okay. we do transactions all over the country, do litigation in California only. Um, if you end up in a dispute that ends up, uh, uh, whether it's a syndication dispute or a joint venture dispute, to get through the resolution of that dispute, whether it's through mediation, arbitration, or court, let's just assume it's going to be court. Okay. Uh, in order to get uh, through the uh, through a trial in, in these days in in this wonderful land of opportunity that we live in you got to you got to expect it's going to cost you at least a hundred thousand dollars and real estate disputes can uh, be one of the most expensive disputes to resolve because uh, the stakes are so high I mean in, in real estate it's not unusual to have multi-million dollar disputes sure and, and in a multi-million dollar dispute it is not unusual unfortunately to have legal fees that are in the mid to high six figures to maybe even the seven figures. I did the deal. I, I had a client in a in a, a joint venture dispute not too long ago, where it involved uh, three. He was in a joint uh, uh, had a joint venture with one partner, and they uh, over a ten year period had done three development deals. 
uh, and you know you're a land geek, so you this is right within your wheelhouse here. I mean, these are these are guys who took raw land and then took it all the way through development. Sure, three deals over ten years and multi million dollar dispute, and there were uh, by the time that deal was done, by the time that that uh, uh, arbitration, it was an arbitration, a three three pers- three panel three person panel because of the size of the dispute. Multi-million, multi-million dollar dispute, his legal fees were in seven figures, over a million dollars in legal fees. Okay, so th- this is not something where you want to cut corners and say, oh, you know what, I'll, ha- I'll go to LegalZoom.com and <laughs> fill out some, right. some no, JV I mean, paperwork. Yeah, it's, and and it's, it's unusual to have to have experts involved because it, 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 you might have lost profits issues and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, when it comes to any kind of OPM dispute, the stakes are very high. The benefits are huge, obviously. I mean, you're always better off to do deals with other people's money because you can leverage everything. You can leverage your time, you can leverage your money, you can leverage your all your resources. So I, I firmly believe, you know, in our, in, in, in our family office over the last 50 years, uh, most of the deals that we've done have been with joint venture partners. I'm a firm believer in uh, using joint ventures, and this is not something that's unique to me. Uh, this is, I could show you an article that was recently in uh, Forbes, where they're talking about this notion that multifamily offices like ours, which are defined as ultra high net worth you know, family um, uh, family real estate businesses, right. they are using the exact strategy that I'm talking to you about right now, not because they need the money, but because they want to diversify the risk. They want to diversify their risk. They, and so people, the, the super wealthy in this country and the super wealthy real estate investors are using this strategy, not because they need the money, but because it's prudent to diversify your risk. Yeah. I mean, Jeff, I, I used to do investment banking. I mean, these guys never use their own money. And we're, yeah. talk, we're talking about, you know, billion dollar funds. Yeah. Um, and they would co-venture with other funds right. to diversify their risk. I mean, this is just something that, you know, the wealthy do. Right. And it's just, it's just a smart strategy. So, But I got off track. I wanted to answer your question. Yeah, let's get back to the secret. Short. So I was, at this, I was at this conference and I was talking to a gentleman who didn't know that I was about to get up on the stage and teach this topic. And I was saying I was uh, just trying to get to know him. And he was telling me, I, I said, are you doing, I said, tell me a little bit about what you're doing right now. He says, well, I'm not doing a whole lot right now. And I said, why not? He says, well, because I got all my money tied up in my deals. And he was very proud about the fact that he had a pretty sizable portfolio, but he owned 100% of all his deals. And I told him about this exact strategy that I'm telling you about. And remember, this is a guy who's sophisticated enough to have a pretty decent sized portfolio that he funded all himself. And I said, you know, uh, this is a great time to be investing and you're not investing because you have all your money tied up in your deals. You know, if you raised, uh, if you got a couple partners to come into your existing deals, you could pull equity out of your deals. Just, you know, your partner comes in and you take that money that they pay you to get a piece of your deal. And now you've got money to go do more deals. Right, right, and which to you and me seems maybe elementary and obvious, but when I, I'm uh, I'm telling you when I told him this, his eyes lit up and his whole body language shifted, and you could just see that it was uh, an epiphany for him. And he told me later, he said, uh, "You completely shifted the way I think, and I am restructuring my entire business to now do exactly what you said." So. Um, and it's it's actually a lot more powerful to use the strategy for deals that you currently own because as opposed to deals that you're thinking of buying because the the story is so much more compelling to say, look, I believed in this particular deal so much that I put 100% of all the money required for this deal in myself, number one. Number two, I've removed a lot of the risk because I have now seasoned this investment over a period of time. And uh, those are two, in this business of, of doing deals with other people's money, the story is so crucial to uh, the, 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 the process of, of uh, trying to convince others to uh, invest with you 
that's a very powerful, that's a very powerful, truly powerful story. And right. so, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a strategy which, and I'll tell you another story which I think drives the point home. I was at another conference a couple weeks back and I was teaching, it was a weekend that I was teaching syndication the entire weekend. Um, and I was, at, 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 one, at one of the breaks, a guy comes up to me after I had, was just got finished explaining everything, all the do's and don'ts under the securities laws when you're trying to do syndication, talking about accredited versus not accredited, and talking about how important it is that you have a pre-existing substantive relationship with somebody for at least uh, 30 days before you start pitching them a deal, uh, and the deal can't be a deal that you already had um, in process when you establish the relationship, you know, and all the rules and all that. Sure. And he comes up to me and says, well, you know, what if I need money now? What, you know, I need money now. I don't have time. I don't have a 60, 90 day window, a lead time to start to build up an investor list that I can, that I can make sure I am making an offer in compliance with the securities laws. And uh, I said, well, then your really only option is to do a joint venture because in a joint venture, you don't have to worry if somebody's accredited or not accredited and you don't have to worry if there's a pre-existing substance of relationship because it's not a security. It's just Mark sees Jeff and they meet at, at wherever, start talking, and the SEC doesn't care about what you and I do as long as we're both actively involved. Okay, so let's define actively involved because, okay, so for example, I've got a subdivision I bought um, from the county in Texas and it's 200 lots, right? And I want to put mobile homes on, on some of these lots and I don't know anything about mobile home investing. So I'm looking for a JV partner actually right now to do that. Uh -huh. So when we're done with the podcast, I'll, I'll have to talk to you about that. But, you know, what kind of partner should I be looking for? I mean, you know, who do I get in bed with? How do I know that this is, some, this is something that's going to work and in six months down the line, we hit a bump, they're not going to sue me? Yeah, so a couple of uh, – so uh, that – point about how do you make sure you got the right partner. Um, we're, we're moving around a little bit, so I apologize for that. There's so much to cover and everything's all interconnected here. Right. Um, we do a, um, I've got, uh, making sure that you have the right partner is very important. And there, I have uh, two uh, special reports that I created to, that addresses both of these. One is called 17 Steps to Setting Up a Successful Joint Venture. And what that is, is uh, describes the, the, um, the process, the, the dialogue, the conversation that you need to go through with somebody that you are thinking of creating this business marriage with, because make no mistake about it, as you said, it is a marriage. It is a real, it's an important relationship. And um, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And so one of the ways that you make sure you're working with the right partner is to have this kind of uh, conver this conversation where you are talking about all the things that you need to discuss. And this is not intuitive. This is not common sense. This is uh, a 17-point success strategy session that you need to go through. And, and I always go through this with my clients. Uh, to make sure that they have asked all the uh, hard questions and had all the tough discussions up front when they still each have enough leverage in that discussion to make sure that each one, nobody's t being taken advantage of and they're going in with their eyes open. I got another special report I created called 12 Warning Signs You're Headed for a Lawsuit with Your Partner because um, there are always warning signs. And after seeing clients in my litigation practice, for these very for these several decades, and seeing how many of these deals fall apart, um, I decided, and, and having been on the front lines when they do fall apart, I wanted to put together this uh, report so to educate uh, my my clients as to when they should recognize that there's a problem. I, I'll tell you another quick story. Sure. I had a client who um, was in a uh, partnership. And he showed up one day to his office and the, his key didn't work. The, his partner had changed the locks. And he called me up and told me this and, and asked me, what do I do now? I said, well, 
you know, what did he say? Why, why did he change the locks? And he said, because I've been trying to get your attention for weeks and weeks now, and you've gone dark on me, and this is what I felt I needed to do just to get your attention. Wow. Yeah, and so there are always warning signs. When the communication starts breaking down, when emails don't get answered, when calls don't get returned, my friend, you have a problem. And, you know, if you, I have dealt with some of the smartest, wealthiest, most sophisticated people you'll ever meet. And this, this um, concept is not, uh, is not something that only applies to uh, somebody who's never done it before. This, I can't tell you how many times people who are uh, smart, sophisticated, wealthy, uh, they get lost in the weeds when it comes to some of the stuff. Sure. I mean, you know, people want to avoid conflict typically. Yes. And if you've got a JV partner that you're having issues with, that's something that, that's really hard. That's a hard conversation to have. It is. And it you, is. Almost, you almost need to have a third party like yourself to kind of help mediate it and say, hey, look, I'm having issues with my partner. Right. I don't know how to, how to bring it up. So that, well, and, and that's yeah. a great point, you know, because uh, I, when I give these talks, more often than not, somebody in the audience, and when I, because I, I talk about this notion how uh, how the stakes are high and the cost of not getting it right can be so expensive, and almost every time I give this and I, I'm talking, you know, I'm very interactive with my audience. Somebody tells me, yeah, you know what? I just got finished with a, uh, a dispute with my partner and it cost me $100,000 just to get through the mediation. Didn't even see the inside of a courtroom just to get through the mediation. Because again, the stakes are high. Sure. And, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but having said all that, I don't want to dwell on the negative. Again, there's, there are risks in every real estate situation. Uh, the good news is, number one, uh, I am telling you, as somebody who has seen the good, seen the bad, seen the ugly, uh, I still love joint ventures, and it's my my preferred way of doing business. Because I'll tell you why: everybody, everybody has a challenge in real estate, and I believe that every challenge that you have in real estate, virtually every challenge you face in your in trying to achieve your real estate investing goals, the solution is a joint venture. For me, I'm a busy lawyer. I got a full time practice. And I'm also an investor. And my biggest challenge is that I don't have enough time to find the great deals. That's right. my biggest challenge. I, that's why I go to a conference to speak or to network with high-level real estate investors. And I'm looking for somebody who's got a great deal and has found that deal. And um, I'm fine bringing the money to their deal. And uh, I'll do that all day long. Uh, so I like, you know, if somebody has a deal that they've already vetted and, uh, it makes sense and it meets my acquisition criteria to me, that's a faster way to get deals done than to sift through dozens or hundreds of emails from brokers to try to find the needle in the haystack and then do my enough analysis so I can identify which deal actually makes sense, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you know, we both know how long how hard it is to find good deals. Oh, so absolutely. for me, you know, for me, uh, I needed, I, that's, that's, that's my biggest problem in, in this business. Not enough time. Everybody's got a problem. Right. And now, now in my niche, because the deals are typically smaller, what, what I found is that we can find great deals all day long, the way that we target it. And we're getting 300% to a thousand percent margins, but it's hard to find, somebody on the other side of it that's really good at marketing that land, right? So what I found with a lot of my students is that they're really good at getting the deals, but then they struggle in selling it or vice versa. They're great marketers, but they don't like the, the process of hustling to get the deal. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and again, in this business, it's there's so much involved in getting – from the beginning to the end that and if you try to be a one man show one person show it is infinitely more intimidating challenging uh difficult than if you have the right strategic partner and every single word in that phrase i just used is important the right strategic partner don't just partner with one person just because 
you know, you happen to meet somebody uh, that, that, you know, it seems like a nice person. It's got to be, you got to determine, do they, what value do, would they bring to your relationship? Is it a value that you need? And even if it is, then you need to go through the correct vetting analysis to make sure there's a good fit between you and your partner. And that's how you, that's how you minimize your uh, risk and maximize your profits doing deals with joint venture partners. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm going to be downloading your free reports for sure. Um, all right. We're at that point in the podcast now where, Jeff, I get to put you on the spot and ask you, what is your tip of the week? And you're going to have to come back on the podcast because this is such a, a weighty subject and we could probably talk hours and hours about it. Yep. But, um, you know, what is your tip of the week? If you, like a resource Let's, or a website or, or something that can help our community grow their investing businesses. Well, I think my tip of the week is really if, if this, if what we've been talking about here has uh, touched a chord, if it resonates with you, then I think um, if you're interested in, in pursuing the strategy, I think in order, you know, so many of us in this business get intimidated to the point where we don't even start. I think the first thing you need to think about is get, I think the first thing you need to do is get into some, spend a few minutes doing some possibilities thinking, just like we would if I, if I met you at one of these events and we started having a conversation, you know, I would ask you, what is your biggest challenge? What has been holding you back from doing more deals right now? And you need to answer that question. Once you get that kind of clarity, and it shouldn't be that difficult. For most of you, it's a pain point that, uh, I, that you should probably be able to answer right now. If I was, if I was in a conversation with you somewhere, I, I, most people can say it immediately. They can say, I don't have any money. I got bad credit. I don't have enough time. I don't know. I, I, I want to do land deals, but I don't... Um, I don't have the the guy to market it. Whatever it is, this is not uh, this is not something that most people have to think about very long because, unfortunately, they think about it all the time, and it's uh, and they, and it's 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 so frustrating because here we are again in this time of great opportunity, but for some reason you're not getting the results that you want. So think about it, and it could be two answers. You know, maybe you know, like I did a joint venture that had four partners in it. One. I brought the money. Somebody else brought the deal and got the loan. Somebody else was the uh, the broker who was going to sell. This was going to be a, a uh, housing subdivision. Uh -huh. So we had a, we had uh, we had a developer. We had a broker who was going to sell the houses once we were done. We had the guy who brought the deal together and got the loan, and we had myself. And I brought I brought the money to the deal. So um, there were four people who are actively involved in that joint venture. Who do you need? to get your success, uh, to, to take your real estate investing career to the next level. That's, that's my tip of the day. Get clear on that. And then when you want to start looking for people that can uh, provide, fill, that, fill that void, here's, here I'll give you one other tip. I have a free uh, LinkedIn group called Real Estate Joint Venture Matching Group. Real Estate Joint Venture Matching Group. If you go to LinkedIn, uh, you, you just search that and you'll find my group. And we got 3,500 members in it right now. And I'm very wow. actively involved managing that. So I, I really tried to weed out all the promotions and make every post there an actual deal where somebody is looking to find a joint venture partner. That's a place that you can go to right now for free and you could see some joint venture opportunities and see some potential uh, funding sources and and uh, that's a free that, that's a free resource to you right now so there are two tips to uh, to get you moving get you some momentum that's great that's great okay so my tip of the week is I'm going to shamelessly promote uh, Jeff's site ieisonline.com because I have a feeling that if we just retain Jeff hourly it would be really expensive. But he has uh, packages already put together. And Jeff, can you kind of enlighten us about some of these packages? Uh, yeah, we have packages on uh, all, sorts of, um, all sorts of topics that, again, I, uh, I, I try to put things out there that are unique. If I, I don't like to do 
just a repeat of what somebody else has done. So uh, we represent clients in both transactions, litigation and transactions. Is anything in the cycle of ownership? So everything from asset protection to entity formation to uh, purchase and loan agreements, loan documents, construction, uh, and every uh, and, and disputes that may arise in the context of any of those. So for right now. Uh, in, uh, if you need money to invest, we have a home study course for syndication. We uh, have uh, courses about construction. Um, how to? Um, we, we have courses about if your property is in distress. Courses about fraudulent transfers. How to avoid those? Commercial loan workouts, and some of these are for free. Uh, we we offer them just you know to give give you uh, some help in times of need. I think our uh, fraudulent transfer course is free, for example, and that's something that everybody needs to know about. Um, and I think I, our construction course is also free, but go to the website and you'll see. We also, if this topic that we've been talking about today is of interest to you, this is something that we do not yet have loaded up on the website. So in order for people to get more information about that, I think uh, Mark, you're going to yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to provide a link uh, yeah. for everybody to go there and um, and check it out and and learn more. All right, so you'll provide that link and they'll get the, that information that way. Exactly, exactly. Well, Jeff, are we good? Are, are uh, yeah, well, yeah, we're good. Yeah. All yeah, right. I enjoyed talking to you. And you're right. This is a, this is a very important topic that we could be talking about for hours. But if people don't more more information about it, you're going to give them that link, and you'll tell them how they can get it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and you 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 know what's interesting about you is you take you know kind of a drier subject and you make it really interesting. So um, you know maybe you'll come to one of my boot camps. I'll, I'll have to talk to you about this after the podcast. All right. I good. I try to do a a PowerPoint presentation on syndication. I mean, there wasn't a I mean, people were just falling asleep on me. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I teach. Yeah, I, uh, I again, I just taught a weekend on it. I was teaching. Uh, I was. I was. There were two instructors, myself and somebody else, handling some of the business aspects of. It. I had. To, I had to talk for seven hours over the weekend on just the legal aspects of it, and uh, I am proud to say that I did not uh, see one person nod off. So I was very proud of myself. That's that's incredible. I mean, you know, my, my whole thing was everything I'm about to say, review with your attorney, but this right. is the basis, basics of it. It was like, you know, maybe 30 or 40 minutes and uh, everyone was like, please skip this next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, again, learn more about uh, Jeff Lerman. I mean, what's the, what's the main website people can go to? Uh, for uh, for my firm, for your firm, real, for my firm, it's realestateinvestorlaw dot com. Realestateinvestorlaw dot com. Again, uh, download those free reports that Jeff was talking about. Uh, the seventeen ways to uh, find a uh, appropriate JV partner, or right. or, or seventeen steps to a successful so joint venture. Seventeen steps to a successful joint venture and twelve warning signs you're headed for a lawsuit with your partner. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely get those at the very least. And uh, look, give me some love. If you want to learn more tips and tricks and techniques on how to make an incredible income actively and passively, go to www.thelanegeek.com and download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And if you're looking for some wholesale land, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. And it was Jeff Lerman. I appreciate your very valuable time once again. And uh, this is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek. I'll see everybody next week. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Land Geek.